Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be doing a podcast on the sciences or foundations for wellness. Maybe I'll put it in both. I'm going to call it Want to Feel Better? Care for Your Pet. Now, the article I think had to do with a dog, but it went into a theory I thought was interesting. I was on the phone with a friend going through, um, just talking about shit while I was going through uh, certain things I was going to do for the podcast, and I took a comic book out and I use that for inspiration, I write an adventure. But this article is pretty interesting, and it says, the title is, Want to Feel Better? Science Says to Care for Your Dog. Admit it, caring for your pet can make you happy too. Science is Working on Why, by Scotty Hendricks, and it's from the Big Think website. I'll post a link in the description, as I normally do. It also has a button to listen to the article, so you could probably hear someone much more articulate and better sounding than me. The points of the article are, a study shows that caring for your pets can improve your well-being. The research has found the act of caring provided more improvements than mere companionship. These results aren't limited to pets. Plenty of studies show caring for others can improve your well-being. As normal, I will most likely read word for word the article. Here and there I'll stop, I'll inject. And this one, I might have to go into a quick uh, aside to a uh, psychology uh, theory. But I'll get to that when we get to it. So I'll begin. Many pet owners will tell you that tending to their pets is a chore, but one that often brings joy. Psychology noticed this a long time ago, and the pet effect, the tendency of people with pets to be healthier, happier, and live longer, is an increasingly well-documented phenomenon. While these studies suggest that many of the benefits come from pets seeming to attend our needs for companionship, a new study finds that providing for your pet's needs can grant similar benefits. By the way, the article has plenty of highlighted words, underlined, that lead to other links. I always like those type of articles. I'll continue. Admit it, you treat your dog like it's a person and act accordingly. It's kind of okay, though. Tons of people do. Researchers with the Interdisciplinary Interdis- Center of the Baruch Ifger, Ifger, <laughs> School of Psychology asked 104 dog owners to keep a journal for 21 days. The test subjects rated how much they agreed with statements about their interactions with their pet, such as... When I interacted with my dog, I tried to show it that I really care for it. Or, when I interacted with my dog, I tried to let it feel free to be its true self. They also responded to questions of how they were feeling and if they supposed supposed their dogs cared about them. As predicted, owners who gave their dogs more support reported higher levels of well-being, felt closer to their pets, and noted less psychological distress. The effect was more sustaining substantial than the benefits gained from receiving support from pets, suggesting that giving support satisfies a need by itself. The dogs involved in the study could not be reached for comment, but are assumed to have enjoyed the attention. <laughs> I like that little thing. All right, so here's where we get into um, this hierarchy of needs. This is self-determination theory. Uh, The authors of this interpreted these findings in the light of self-determination theory, or SDT, a theory of human motivation that focuses on innate drives and needs. It centers around the idea that humans function well when our internal motivations are satisfied, and less so when they are not. The key motivations are autonomy, defined as the need to be casual agent, competence, defined as the need to experience mastery, relatedness, defined as a need to interact and connect with others, as well as a need to experience caring. Now, there's a big deep dive you can do into this theory. So there's a... I'll just quickly go over... Self-determination theory represents a broad framework for the study of human motivation and personality. SDT articulates a meta-theory for framing motivational studies, a formal theory that defines intrinsic 
and varied extrins extrinsic sources of motivation and a description of the respective roles of intrinsic and types of extrinsic motivation in cognitive and social development and individual differences. Perhaps more importantly, SDT propositions also focus on how social and cultural factors facilitate or undermine people's sense of volition and initiative, in addition to their well-being and the quality of their performance. Conditions supporting the individual's experience of autonomy, competence, and relatedness are argued to foster the most volitional and high-quality forms of motivation and engagement for activities, including enhanced performance, persistence, and creativity. In addition, SDT proposes that degree to degree which any of these three psychological needs is unsupported or thwarted within a social context will have a robust detrimental impact on wellness in that setting. The dynamics of psychological need support and need thwarting have been studied within families, classrooms, teams, organizations, clinics, and cultures using spe specific propositions detailed within SDT. The SDT framework thus has both broad and behavior-specific implications for understanding practices and structures that enhance versus diminish need satisfaction and the full functioning that follows from it. These many implications are best revealed by the various papers included, which range from basic research on motivational microprocesses to applied clinical trials aiming at population outcomes. All right, so that's a quick aside. Is it a meta theory and a formal theory? The difference, I guess you could say, in some of these things are you have nothing to work with, let's say dark matter. We'll do equations and we can prove there's something there. We're calling it dark matter and what its influence is. Same type of thing. There's only so much you could study and with these type of ethereal things, but you can do empirical investigations and do studies on it. So they do the both of them and they try to come up with a formula and there are six of them. Uh, cognitive evaluation theory, uh, organistic integration theory, causality orientations theory, basic psychological needs theory, goal contents theory, relationship motivation theory. And there's other connections, but this is just a quick thing so I could get back to the article, but I did want to get a little overview of self-determination theory. I'm a big fan of psychology. I've been, you know, looking into it since I was 16, and all these little things are little memory flickers, but for people who are interested, like me, who it brings that little memory of learning about it in some extent, you can go in and get a deep dive if you're interested. All right, so I'll get back to the article. One possible explanation of the pet effect observed here is that owners are anthropomorphizing, anthropomorphizing their dogs and allowing their owners to perceive tending to a dog's needs as similar to tending to another person's needs. In particular, this is satisfying the need for relatedness, where the dogs actually have the same need to contact with others or to be supported so it can feel free to be its true self as humans do remains unknown. In any case, it does appear that you can satisfy your need to care for something by trying to make your pet happy. Exactly how far can this effect be pushed, and if it still works, if people aren't anthropomorphizing their pets, are areas for future study. The idea behind SDT can be applied in many situations. Not only ones involving pets. A variety of other studies have shown that providing care for others can improve your well-being, but have focused on what happens when humans tend to other humans. Science has confirmed what many pet owners already knew. Taking care of your fur-covered friend is often more of a joy than a chore. This study points to new ways to improve your well-being by interacting with both humans and animals to make everybody feel a little better. Uh, and then it ends with, now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to play with my cat. Well, I don't have a pet, so, <laughs> so much for my thing. All right. I'm a big proponent of meditation and breathing techniques. And when you want to go into of how you apply things in the world, I think this is a good article. 
you know, you can get into the evolutionary biology and psychology of it. Uh, you know, you can also say maybe that we are more inherently good than quote unquote evil. And then we got this far, but now we're just so mired in our bullshit. It's to me more like, look, we're still really cavemen, but our brains in the society are like, we have to adapt better. And here's one way, you know, you want to have a dog or cat, you call it your son, you treat it, you know, fine. There is a weird balance there between maybe having a, a disorder of some kind, but there's always outliners for everything. And it's not just companionship, it's making them feel happy, doing things for them. I posted the podcast will have a image on it and it's like a um you know it's more like a uh five steps on how to keep a pet happy or thing and it kind of involves both the person and the dog so when it says diet it's you know you should take care of your diet too but caring for your dog's diet will also benefit you giving it the time and attention it needs and i'm one who thinks behavior is important i think you should train your dog I'm not saying beat it and hit it and stuff. I mean, there are better ways to do it. But all this increases your wellness, your own health. And if you look at the image that's on the podcast, you'll get a little thing. I just found it off the internet. And I think I could put this podcast into the sciences and the foundations for wellness. Some advice for people just happens to be get a pet. I would tend to say get a bigger pet, more like a bigger breed of dog, something that has body weight and mass, not, uh, I have a little thing with these little dogs and anyway, you put them in your purse and stuff, but okay, whatever. There are birds and frogs in the general sense. I think it's a lot like talking to somebody can help. They don't have to be a professional. You could talk to a friend. I'm not saying they're going to give you cognitive behavior therapy and fix you. But we all, like, it's just a thing that is known for us. And then you can increase that with talking to somebody helps. Talking to somebody who kind of knows more helps. And there's a dangerous balance there also. Because someone, well, let's say like me, who doesn't have a degree or anything, but who's spent uh, 16... You know, 26 years, 20-something years on learning about it and doing deep dives into it. It can be dangerous. You can make mistakes, and you got to be careful. So, yes, it's take care of your pet. Give it the attention, the companionship it needs. And we are piecing together how this works and the psychology of it. The self-determination theory was interesting. I saved the... Um, article or the connect uh one of the threads i had connected to it and i'm gonna get back into that it's been a while since i even heard the fucking term but all these things are just how we f try to find better ways of you know looking at the way we work as humans and again it's not going to all be exact evidence and you know we don't know how to examine dreams and and um Things like that. But we have theories we work on. And some of it is built on observation and study. And some has to be just meta theories. Just ways we can conceive of it happening. I think we should all be better to our pets. And even if you think you take care of your pet, you can think of it in a different way. It's not just attention. How you be treat your dog behavior. It's diet. I look at it as I've always loved dogs. I like cats, but I'm a dog person. I just can't have a pet here. I would see myself getting dogs in the future or even having like a, you know, mom or upstate type house type thing. So I'm a big dog lover, but I believe you have to train your dog. And they benefit from that training. And I'm not saying, like I said before, I'm not looking to have people advocate for you know, discipline your dog. Just like I don't believe it's um, so necessary to spank your children these days, as we've been finding out. 
but it's a good look into psychology on how these things work and some of the studies are being done most of them are being done from person to person like how humans treat humans but we have this connection to pets and they become a family and that's a strong um pull to us and how it works through our psychology and our evolution as a species is pretty amazing to me i hope everybody enjoyed it sorry for my blunders and stuff like subscribe to all that stuff I hope to see you next time. Take care, everybody.